The first major of the disc golf season is over, and of course it wouldn't come without drama. So we've got you covered on that and everything else you need to know. What's up, Disgenerates? I'm Jefferson, alongside me, the one with all the holes in his game, Swiss Cheese, and we're with the Disc Golf World, recapping everything you may have missed from over the weekend. The United States Women's Disc Golf Championship went down, and boy was it one for the books. Maybe not for the historically great play, but history nonetheless. The Sprinkle property would be under development the past year for this tournament and the FPO. This being the first time an elite event was played on the course, I was a fan. I could see the vision, and with time, the rough areas will start to smooth out and make its way into a natural course. With some player feedback, I could see some big things from this venue. Now, if I was in charge of scheduling, I don't see why the tour doesn't start off in Florida, have the next tournament be at Paul McBeth's secret disc golf course in Alabama the following week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video. After that, the tour then heads to Waco for a three-round event at Brazos Beast, because let's be real, it's just better there and we don't need another ball golf course on tour. Now that we're at the fourth event, I feel it would be appropriate for a plus event. I mean, you can't be in Texas for a month and not spice it up. With the positive reactions from Harvey Pennick after this year's Open at Austin, I don't see why there can't be two rounds there and the other two at Sprinkle. I mean, the courses are 10 minutes apart and offer different styles of disc golf. Makes it even better that Austin is the biggest metropolitan area the tour visits, so might as well have a big event in the area. And after that, I don't care where the tour goes, but that's what I have to propose. And having the opportunity to talk to some of the MPO pros about Sprinkle, lots were optimistic about the longer layouts that will start to be worked on. Having this pros on property was good as well, so they could give their opinion early and it can really be taken into consideration. Last thing I want to touch before Swiss gives you the recap. This is the third year in a row we've been able to attend USWDGC, and every year it truly is great to see the MPO players coming out to support. I'm not just talking about the simps on the bag either. James Conrad and Casey White, along with others I'm sure, followed along the entire final round, taking it all in with the fans. I'm glad our pros take the chance to support each other. That's the only way our sport's going to keep growing. Okay, now here's Swiss with a recap. Guys, Owned warned us all during the presser. I feel like one day you're going to play good and one day you're going to play bad. This is the boss. Yeah, this is the boss. That one is a... Manager, yeah. uh, this is the boss. Look, I was there and thought the same as you. Surely this was your standard token pro response. No chance the newly designed sprinkle would play out like that over the four days. And we couldn't have been more wrong, because this weekend certainly played as such. Day one saw the most adverse wet conditions, and funny enough, the second best scoring round over the four days. Rebecca Cox came out to an early lead with a six under, which all came on the more difficult back half for her opening round. Valerie Mondahanu held an early lead, but a costly bogey on 18 had her finishing tied with Rebecca. Though 6-under would be a strong score, it would come in behind Missy Gannon's 7-under opening round, taking control early with a 40-foot birdie putt that kicked off a 7-under front half, would shoot even on the back with a bogey and a birdie, and positioned herself possibly to win her first major of her career. Four others were tied with 3-under, including Sai Ananda, Evelina Salonen, Kristen Tatar, and Natalie Ryan. Owen Scoggins, coming off a dominating victory, shot plus three on the rounds, same as Katrina Allen, and if you're looking for Paige, she was in the bottom half of the division with a 10 over. Round two was rough, to say the least. Only 9% of the field shot par or better, with the hot round being only three under by Owen, who responded on day two, making her even for the tournament and move up 19 positions into the top 10 with two days to play. When a 3-under moves you up 19 spots on the lead card, it really shows the separation of the field. Heidi Laney with a 2-under herself moved her 15 spots up, and though Missy was only able to put together a 1-under round after a difficult stretch on 8 through 10, it was still enough to stretch her lead to 3 strokes over Evelina. Tatar went in the opposite direction though, shooting a 3-over for the round, dropping her to even for the tournament and 8 strokes behind Missy. With two days left to play, Tatar stands held out hope, though most felt with her being injured, it might be too difficult of a climb. Yet with younger players like Evelina, Valerie, and Ad Holland Hanley, many hoped that the weekend would provide more excitement and better rounds. Saturday had the best conditions and ultimately the best scoring from the field. Evelina came in and matched the hot round for the tournament with a 7-under with a bogey that resulted in a 10-23 rated round. And though anyone who's paying attention, none of you would be surprised with her leading tee to green for the day. Some might, however, be surprised by the 88% C1 putting performance and two big 30-foot birdies. She finished a stroke better than Missy's 6-under and closed the lead down to only two strokes, heading into the finale. 
that would feature the head-to-head race as the next closest competitor was Holland, six strokes behind Evelina. Laney's six under performance jumped her all the way onto a lead card for a major, which was the first of her career. The final day was overcast and more importantly, the worst wind conditions on an already difficult track, resulting in the worst scoring round of the entire tournament. Only saw seven players shoot even or better, none of which were on lead card, who collectively went 17 over for the round. And as brutal as that sounds, there still was some action at the top for a better portion of the round. Could not have kicked off any worse for Avelina, who on hole one was pinched after her drive. Her decision to go up and over the trees would be costly as the wind pushed the disc further into the rough, resulting into a double bogey, extending Missy's lead to four after the first hole. And in these gusts, with Missy's ability to hit fairways, it would be difficult for Avelina to close the gap. Evelina often found herself in better positions than Missy early, but was unable to capitalize from just outside the circle's edge, missing four open C2 putts on holes 5 through 8, which were very costly. A Missy bogey on 5 could have been a two-stroke swing, which instead resulted in only one. Evelina's miss from C2 the very next hole not only messed up the star frame, but also allowed Missy to regain the stroke lost the hole prior. As difficult as those two holes were, 7 and 8 were even more harder to swallow. For Evelina and what just might have cost her their chance at victory. Missy found herself scrambling after she was off fairway on seven for a guaranteed bogey and Evelina two-putted again after her first miss from C2's edge would result in only a single stroke swing. Eight was even worse and may have shaken Evelina's confidence for the remainder of the tournament. Missy was in another poor position and after hitting a tree and an approach shot that left her with a nearly no look to save par as it looked as though she would be taking back-to-back bogeys. Evelina's drive and approach left her on circle's edge yet again for a possible two-stroke swing, only for Evelina to up and three-putt, taking a bogey herself, going from a possible two-stroke swing to an even. She would not be the same mentally after that, going on to two-putt within C1X five more times after that. A double bogey on 15 after a tree kick off the drive put her in jail, all but sealed the victory for Missy. Missy birdied 17 for the cheering fans and celebrated with a champagne shower on 18 for her first major win of her career. With only a world championship, now the remaining notch for her career. Evelina was able to hold on to a second place finish, though I might have been tough on her. Evelina this season not only has a win already, but a podium at a major, a top five, and a top ten. And as long as she can shake off this putting performance, I think she'll be near the top for most events. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. Rounding out the podium, Valerie Mondejano was able to jump up two spots for the two under final round. Going 11 for 13 from C1X and with two putts for birdie outside the circle, she was able to gain strokes in the field, even with two bogeys and a double. Owen Scoggins would fight her way back up the leaderboard into a top five with a solo fourth place. Owen would be four down through 17 holes where she would take her first bogey of the round and unfortunately would follow it up with a double bogey on the final hole, going plus three on the last two holes, which would be the difference between fourth and second place. Kristen Tatar would have her worst finish on the Pro Tour in her entire career. Don't be too alarmed, however, as it was only a sixth place finish. But with continued play that looks under her typical performance, there should be some attention. In the press conference, she mentioned continued pain and said that she feels it almost constantly. Rather, she's choosing not to look at it in a negative way. Her words, not mine, as she had this to say. I've been talking about it a little that I've felt sort of drained. The start of the season has been a little bit overwhelming to me and everything is starting to catch up with me. I was just like sick before coming to the States and then I had to like make a trip to Sweden and and all sorts of other stuff and I was so busy and I had some visa problems and and then I finally got the ticket here and I was so like uh, excited to play disc golf and I won my first event now it's sort of like oh my gosh I'm so tired I haven't had like a rest day or anything you mentioned the back pain last week were you feeling that still during your practice rounds oh yeah I'm still feeling it right now (laughs) I mean um but um yeah, it's it's there, but I'm I'm sure it will go away eventually. It's just 
I don't know. Right now, it's it's just something that I'm dealing with. Hopefully, she's able to bounce back strong, although she shared this picture of her swollen ankle on Instagram after the final round. She didn't make a big deal out of it, but we'll just have to wait and see. Tatar also went on to share a perspective of her troublesome week. From back pain, fatigue, no sleep, personal issues, and more weighing her down. Now that she didn't win the first major of the year, there might be a relief off of her shoulders since the idea of a Grand Slam is gone. Jordan Linz would shoot her best round of the event to jump up three spots into seventh place with her two under. Three birdies, one bogey, and a lot of pars. Ella Hansen started off double bogeying hole one, which would kick off the worst round of the tournament for her at three over, dropping her into eighth place. Natalie Ryan would hold on to a top 10 finish with the two over final round, staying in ninth place. Over on Instagram, Ryan had this to say. Today on hole 13, a caddy for a competitor chose to intentionally misgender me when I was up to tee. Seeing as I was about to throw, I ignored it and chose not to call the courtesy warning on that player. Intentionally insulting anyone during the round is a truly sad way to try and play mind games, especially from a caddy. Now it doesn't matter where you stand on the subject of transgender women playing in FPO. Insulting anyone about anything during a round is just dumb. What are we, in third grade? This wasn't the only social media post that stirred up the community about Natalie Ryan, as Nico Lacasho made this post which says, A portion of these sales from my first lavender-infused golf discs will go directly towards supporting the growth of women's disc golf. Starting this weekend, I'll be paying the first person who misses cash in FBO due to playing against transgender. This is something that I feel strongly about when it comes to sports and would love to stand behind in all fairness with sacred discs. Ryan then responded with this post. Is your best plan to advertise really using me? Seems pretty desperate. There are a number of surprise finishes this weekend. Some young players finding success in Jordan Lynn's top 10, Cadence Burge just outside in 11th, and some not-so-good performances with Paige Pierce 17 over for the tournament in 28th place, with Katrina Allen right below that in 32nd. Yet the most surprising for me was Haley King, who finished in 32nd place herself. I felt the forehand-friendly wooded track was just what Haley could excel at for a far higher finish and even possibly competing for a win. No different than her past USWDGC win in Wisconsin. She was coming off a of fourth place at Waco despite working through a knee injury from the All-Star weekend. She shot below her rating on all four days, including her best round, which was even par. She did not look great off the tee and her putt was not that much better. Went 0 for in C2 over the four days and statistically lost strokes to the field on the putting green. Injuries has been a topic in the FPO for most of this season already. And we're only in the fourth tournament, which if this continues, maybe those who can remain healthy and are not dealing with injuries are the ones who will continue to perform. That was the first major of the disc golf season. Now we're headed to Houston for the last stop of the Texas Swing. Thank you so much to everyone who we met at USWDGC. You guys are the best, and, and to those who've supported the disc golf world along the way. Quick shout out to Owen and Trevor for hooking it up with the Airbnb, and to every YouTube member who's been helping out, along with each and every subscriber watching. We appreciate each one of you, and guess what? We have some exclusive content coming your way. Actually, it's up right now, so go and check it out. Or become a disgenerate over on the brand new Patreon for more exclusive disc golf world content. But if you want to support, just like and subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the boys while on the road. Oh, and if you want to know why T-pads need to be standardized, check out the video right here.